news, investing, mindset, and more. It's The Short Show, live with Nathaniel Callen. What's going on, guys? Nathaniel here. Welcome to The Short Show. I've been dreaming about this for quite some time now. It is just now coming to fruition, but I've been thinking about how I was going to present all of this information in a live format, and I've really been anticipating the day to make this happen. And of course, the live streams I've done over the past few weeks was just a little precursor to make sure I was able to kind of get some of the functionality working, and I believe I've gotten it as good as I can. Uh, I'm using a webcam right now because the shipment of my little audio or uh, video interface for my camera has not arrived yet, but you know what? The quality looks pretty decent, I think. I wanted to shout out to some of my new subscribers, Jesse Lord, Joseph McGee, Stephen Dore, Luai Tarek, Madukar Koratarege, Monique Nunez, Taco2105, and Floyd Morgan, thanks for joining the community here in the past week or two. And of course, to all of my OG subscribers, I appreciate all of you coming along for the ride as well. We have kind of four topics that we're going to be talking about today. And this is the format I want to go with. Of course, if you have feedback for me, let me know in the comments. But we're going to be talking about some news. We're going to be talking about some mindset motivation. I have a very good friend of mine who will be joining us live. And we'll be talking about overcoming your anxiety. Then we're going to go into some financials. And then finally, my weekly wish list, which is the stocks that I would like to see people invest in right now or even invest in myself and we'll talk about those as well so let's get into it all right so the very first thing i want to talk about is the democratic presumptive nominee for uh the 2020 election and that is vice former vice president joe biden so As you know, Bernie Sanders dropped out of the race and quickly came to endorse Biden for the Democratic nomination. And one of the things that Joe Biden said was that he was going to use or not use. He was going to select a woman as his vice presidential candidate. And so because this show is talking about financials and talking about the economy, I'm going to be looking at some of the uh, nominees that he could look at, as well as kind of what this means for the economy if uh, Biden was to be elected president. So we're going to talk about that. Now, Bernie Sanders has supported and um, has supported the Biden campaign officially And so there's been a lot of discussion about who sold out first. Yeah. So anyways, uh, one of the things that we are going to look at, there are really two candidates that I see, um, and the names have been thrown out there quite a bit. The first one is Kamala Harris. She dropped out of the running for president back in December. and. She, um, even though her name is associated with Joe Biden, I don't really see her as a suitable candidate. She was more along the lines of a progressive. Um, She wanted Medicare for all. She wanted to uh, tax the rich and kind of follow in the footsteps of Bernie Sanders. And so for Joe Biden, Joe Biden is more of a, um, I'd say he's left of center. And so he believes in uh, strong agriculture, rural unions, things like that, not necessarily taxate the rich and uh, give to the poor. So Kamala Harris is not really a good fit in my mind. She does present herself well, but that um, as a vice uh, presidential pick, I don't foresee her um, being the select for Joe Biden. 
Same goes for Elizabeth Warren. She's much more progressive and aligns more with how Bernie Sanders ran his campaign and his his ideas for the economy. And that leaves me with my one pick who I see as a more palatable candidate for Joe Biden, and that would be Amy Klobuchar. Um, officially, she is a, oh, I'm going to mess this up, Democratic Farmer Labor Party. That is what the party in Minnesota is. Um, a strong focus on agriculture, on um on kind of like increasing the capacity and the success of the middle class. And she does come from a agricultural and um, like her grandfather was a coal worker or an iron worker, one of the two. And so I think her fundamentals are definitely much more palatable and uh, she would align better with Joe Biden because his, record in the Senate. And um, as the vice president, he was very focused on um, strong unions and making sure that workers shared the wealth that their companies were making. And so um, from an economic standpoint, I think Amy Klobuchar would be a better fit. Now, I'm sure there are lots of discussions about who would be better. Um, Honestly, I'm not getting I'm not trying to get political with any of this. I just wanted to throw that out there that um, Amy Klobuchar does seem to have kind of a more aligned stance with Joe Biden as far as economics go. And so if you're looking at it from a purely economic standpoint, I think she would end up being the pick for his vice presidential nomination. Now, he did say he's going to pick a woman, and so that does kind of narrow the list of candidates, especially ones who are prominent. She did hang in the uh, Democratic um, primaries, or whatever you want to call them, for a long, long time, much longer than Kamala Harris, and so I could see her being the nominee. Guest on Mindset Motivation tonight is a former staff sergeant in the United States Air Force and now the CEO of Anxiety Hackers International. He is a very old friend of mine and I wanted to have him on the show because the topic of anxiety is so important right now, especially with everything going on in the world and people not being able to go to their jobs or maybe even pay their rent. So it's an incredibly relevant topic. And so go ahead in the chat, leave your thumbs up, say thank you and say hello to Kyle Giese, my next guest. Kyle, how are you? It's a long time coming, buddy. And Kyle, welcome to the channel. It's really good to see you, buddy. Awesome. It's uh, yeah, it's great to see you too. It's been a hot minute. It uh, has. I think the last time was about 2015. Yeah, and I was in Oklahoma, and you were in Wichita Falls, Texas. And man, time flies. I think it was like a Sunday, and I remember you came over, and you're wearing cowboy boots. You had like really embraced the Texan. And, <laughs> I did. Yes. Uh, and that's definitely a little odd since you are from Minnesota, from the cities, right? Yep. Born and raised in Minnesota. And then uh, Air Force sent me all over and I settled in Texas. And when I got out, I just, kind of, I, I don't know, Texas grew on me. So that's where I stayed. <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, for everyone watching the show, what uh, basically explain what you do and um you know, where you're at and how you are here to make a change in the world. Awesome. Yeah. So cool story. I'm going to go back a little bit further. Uh, but uh, um, uh, actually, my uh, my very first Air Force supervisor. <laughs> so, so starting out as an Air Force photographer, that, uh, that was my first experience. So I'm like, super excited to, to reconnect and, and come back. And it's just cool to see things come for full circle. But um yeah, so I started out uh, as an Air Force photographer and uh, journalist, ventured into some broadcasting, and then I fell in love with uh, the uh, uh, content production. And so when I got out of the uh, the Air Force, I shifted from news and more into entertainment, and then started working with um, uh, a film production company in Texas. Um, but uh, things didn't work out quite the way I uh, I had imagined them to work out. Uh, 
and just like anything in life, uh, it, you're, it's hard to take things uh, for granted when uh, just overnight things can disappear. So uh, that's what happened. Uh, our uh, company um, ended up dissolving and then I was left trying to figure out my next path. Um, but uh, while, uh, while I was going on that adventure, I suffered from uh, multiple traumas uh, and just I was crippled with anxiety and, and depression and PTSD. Um, so when that, that film production company turned upside down, I just I nearly threw in the towel and uh, and called it quits. Um, I had tried everything to cope with things, and uh, I went to countless therapists, and uh, a lot of them like to rake up old memories and try to process process them. Um, and while I, I don't want to discredit the work psychologists and psychiatrists are doing, uh, it just didn't work for me. Um, so uh, if you, I, if I actually, if I pulled up my my charts for you, you'd, you'd actually be able to see uh, for the duration that I was in therapy. Um, even though I was progressing through therapy, I maintained a steady baseline of high anxiety and high uh, PTSD symptoms. Um, and every once in a while, it would dip and then come back up. But for the most part, it stayed the same. Um, and I never really got any, uh, any relief from it. So when, uh, when our company turned upside down, uh, I ended up moving back home to Minnesota for a few months, uh, with family. Um, and they, uh, they were going to help me get back on my feet. Uh, and then I moved back to Texas. Um, and I met, uh, uh, well, actually I, I met, uh, my, my buddy Colton long before that, but, uh, my buddy Colton told me, if you ever find yourself in a bad spot, just come over. So I'm back in Texas and things are still not great and shaky at best. Uh, and, uh, and so I, I decided I was going to take him up on the offer, showed up to his house unannounced, didn't call him, didn't text him. And he, he and his wife just happened to be coming back uh, the moment I arrived. And uh, so we were out back and we were talking and he was sharing with me his uh, anxiety hacker method. And he's a uh, decorated uh, disabled uh, Navy veteran too. And so he was uh, sharing with me his, uh, his anxiety hacker method and uh, uh, the things that he used to help him uh, and then his vision for how he wanted to take his method and turn it into a business uh, and scale it. Uh, and so he gave me a book and his workbook and I, I took it home and I went through and I read it and, and I thought to myself, you know, I've tried everything else. So what's one more try? Uh, and so I started reading his book and going through the workbook and learning as much as I could and implementing. Uh, and uh, I didn't think anybody was watching, but uh, Colton and Chelsea were, and they saw the, the transformation that took place. Uh, and just about a month and a half, two months later, uh, we were sitting at a bar grabbing some food and he and his wife turned to me uh, and they, uh, they said, you know, we think you'd be a really good CEO. Uh, would you like to come on board and help us run the company? And I, I, I just couldn't say no to that. So uh, I, having totally transformed myself uh, and turned uh, turned myself into somebody that uh, I, I really wanted to be, uh, I wanted to have that opportunity to do the same thing for other people uh, by sharing my story and then sharing this uh, this method that that worked for me uh, and uh, worked for Colton and worked for everybody else that he shared it with. Uh, and so, uh, and so we, uh, we got together, we brainstormed some things and, and a few months later we've, uh, uh, transformed this business into, uh, something that's, uh, truly incredible. That's a, an amazing story. And it makes it even better that you are a success story. Yeah. You know? You've yeah. gone through the program and you've seen how all of it works and you've been able to apply it personally and to see that transformation and to be able to relate to people and empathize with people who are going through similar situations is very powerful. And uh, I think it's a really, really awesome story. And can you explain what some of these um, practices or, uh, you know, methods that the anxiety hacker uh, goes through or talks yeah. about? There, I'll share one. This one's my absolute favorite. Uh, and it sounds so far fetched, uh, but it works. <laughs> and, uh, and when you get down to the, the science of how it works, it totally makes sense. 
but um, uh, so if you're if you're suffering from anxiety, uh, and this really can go for for anything, if you're suffering from depression or anxiety, um, or maybe it's just like you're worrying about something, uh, pretend for a moment that you are the lead actor in your own movie. And you're portraying the role of someone who doesn't have anxiety or doesn't have depression um, or anxiety or uh, uh, I said uh, depression, anxiety or OCD or whatever the, the case may be. You're portraying the person that you want to be. And so you're acting and behaving like someone who doesn't have it, but inherently you do. So, and, and so it, it sounds funny, but the way it happens or the way it works um, in your brain is that your your conscious mind is telling you that I don't want to have anxiety anymore. I want to be like this, or I want to behave like this. I want to I want to be able to go outside, or I want to be able to go uh, into large groups of people and not have a panic attack. Uh, and so your su- your conscious mind already knows this, but your subconscious mind has adopted uh, long term uh, anxious habits and inappropriate behaviors. So by acting like you don't have anxiety, what you're doing is you're, is you're making your, your conscious mind act as if you don't have anxiety. And event in while uh, the first, I don't know, maybe for some might be a couple weeks, some might be a month or two. It really just depends on the person. But uh, for a little while, you're going to act like you don't have it, but you're still going to feel all these unpleasant feelings. And that's totally normal. Um, but then what, what really happens inside your brain is that you're, you're training your subconscious mind to adopt new, healthy, non-anxious behaviors. So eventually over time, you're building these new neural pathways in your brain. You're restructuring your brain to have these uh, non-anxious thoughts and feelings. Uh, and so over time, it gets easier and easier and easier to deal with uh, because you're um, diverting your mind and disarming those, those thoughts and feelings because really the, they're the anxiety is just a thought and feeling. Uh, it can't harm you. Uh, it feels incredibly unpleasant, uh, and it's uh, not fun. But uh, it's it's something that you can retrain your brain to um, overcome. No, that that makes total sense. Um, something that I have found helpful is whenever I'm in a difficult situation, I kind of think about, is this my emotions that are running things? Or is this the actual situation that is, you know, controlling me? And if I can figure out that, you know, this is just my reaction to something. Um, I, I always say it, <laughs> it sounds dorky, but you know, uh, Madagascar, the penguins, just smile and wave boys, smile and wave. Sometimes you have to have that mindset. And you have to say, okay, I can't control this situation, but I can control how I react to the situation. And in a lot of cases, it's like, what sense and what good is it for me to get upset about something that someone else did or uh, something like a project that didn't turn out how I thought it would? What is the sense in getting all worked up over that when I can control how I feel and how I react I can say, okay, this didn't work out this time, but next time it might work out better. Or that's just motivation for me to try harder or to understand the situation better. And I think people uh, forget about that sometimes. And when you feel like everything is a personal attack on you, um, that anxiety builds up and it can get to the point where it's like, I don't want to go into work. I don't want to be around these people because they always make me feel bad when sometimes you can turn the script literally and say, Hey, I'm the bigger person here. I'm going to continue to be nice, or I'm going to continue to put in the effort and I'm not going to let your actions control how I feel. And I think I know I have a, I've seen, or I've worked with a couple of coworkers who, you know, everything seems like a personal attack you know, and it's like, no, 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 this, this just happened. It, no one could control it. No one could really, you know, make this not happen, but it wasn't a personal attack on you and it doesn't make sense to beat yourself up. You know, it's just a sign of the times. And as you know, in the military, sometimes it's like, 
oh, you made this little infraction, you know, and it's like maybe an overreaction on your supervisor's part. I don't think I ever did it with you, but it's like, you know what? I've, I've had enough with this person. And sometimes you need a harsh uh, discipline to make sure that they understand that this was a very serious infraction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's not necessarily personal, but you're trying to correct an action and, you know, when you get paperwork or when your boss tells you you're not doing a good enough job, that's supposed to be motivation for you to try to do better. It's not for you to beat yourself up and have a pity party and then feel like, you know, the world is going to end. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, this is a great topic. Uh, I, so I love failure and I love messing up. And here's why. <laughs> uh, the more I mess up, Uh, I really break it down into a binary code. So if I, if I mess up and and I make a mistake, let's say I get in trouble from someone, uh, all that is to me, instead of taking it personally and getting upset and emotional about it, uh, I I take the emotions completely out of it. And then I I look at it as a simple yes or no. Um, Did what I, what I did, did it work or did it not work? If it didn't work, then try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else and just keep trying and trying and trying until it works. And it's the same, it works the same way with uh, artificial intelligence. It, it, when, when you start going through something, it'll, it'll go through a process and it'll hit an error. And if it hits that error, it doesn't just stop. It goes, okay, it pivots and then it goes to the next thing and then it continues and it keeps continuing. Uh, Every time there's an error, it shifts uh, until it gets a, uh, yes response or technically a one and zero response. But uh, so I break it down the same kind of way with uh, success and failure. So if uh, the more I, I, I make a mistake or the more I mess up, the more information that is for me to be able to store and say, okay, well, I've tried all of these things and they didn't work or uh, they didn't produce the result that I was looking for. So if I store that, don't discount it and don't forget it, Definitely learn from it and just store it away and say, okay, well, I've already tried all these things and they didn't work. So what haven't I tried yet? Uh, And if I haven't tried something, then that might be an opportunity for me to do something different to produce the result that I'm looking for. So that's kind of how I look at it. So instead of uh, taking things personal and getting uh, upset and emotional about uh, something not working out, I get excited instead. And I'm like, okay, sweet. That didn't work out. Uh, That's okay. I can, I can learn from that. I can move forward. Um, so I, I, I look at it as a more of a failing forward type of thing rather than a, a step backwards. Gotcha. So that sounds like a very, oh man, I'm like purple. So I'm <laughs> fix this. That's a very analytical approach toward, um, towards something like that. Um, what about people who who really haven't dealt with anxiety before, but now with everything going on with maybe not having a job or not being able to pay their bills because they're on unemployment, what advice do you have for them in this time if it's something that they've never really dealt with? And honestly, this is pretty unprecedented. You know, like millions of people are filing for unemployment. New people are filing for unemployment every single week. And there are so many unknowns out there. So what do you say to someone who's never really dealt with this before, but they're starting to feel the anxiety creep in? Yeah. Um, so they, uh, right now, even though there's so many people filing for unemployment, I've actually heard this the other day from, from some people I was having a conversation with, but they're like, well, every, there's so many people filing, filing for unemployment. Where is all the money going? I was like, well, the money isn't going anywhere. It, like right now we are living in the greatest transfer of wealth um, that we've ever seen. So the money still exists. It's just in somebody else's pocket. So, um, so if you're fi- if you've lost your job or if you're struggling with your finances, uh, you have the biggest opportunity right now to do something different and go all in on what you're good at 
uh, and start, uh, you can start a business from home or you can, if you're uh, working from home, you can, you can double down on, on what you're, you're currently doing and, uh, uh, and start opening up, uh, uh, different, uh, revenue streams. But, uh, one of the things that I like to, to look at is, uh, is my finances. So if things get stressful, then, uh, uh, have you ever heard of the faucets method? No, I, oh, I have heard about it, but explain for everyone yeah, what that okay. is exactly. I like the faucets. method. It's like you have a bathtub and the bathtub fills with your money. Uh, and so if you have one faucet on that's filling your bathtub with money and that pipe breaks and no longer fills your bathtub, then that, that, I mean, you're, you stop, you're done. Um, but if you turn on all these different little hoses and put these hoses in your bathtub, if one shuts off, the water still keeps rising. So you might've lost one source of income, but you have other sources of income that are filling your bathtub too. So, uh, so I like to look at, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm struggling, what faucets do I have that are currently turned on? Which ones do I have that I haven't turned on yet, but that I can turn on? And what faucets can I create uh, to funnel uh, more income into my bathtub? Uh, so uh, the more I diversify that, those income streams, uh, the more I'm able to uh, uh, secure myself financially from, from hardship to when things like this happen. So uh, if you're working a normal nine to five job and now you can't work that normal nine to five job, but you've set up your faucets so that you have a passive income stream coming in, um, you can still live off of that uh, while you work, ooh, excuse me, while you work on uh, setting up uh, uh, whatever you want to do, um, build your own business or uh, start coaching people or uh, start, start a YouTube start channel. <laughs> Yeah, whatever you want to, whatever it is you want to do, you can double down on it and do do whatever you want to do while you have all these other faucets that are keeping you afloat. Absolutely, and I think one thing that is super important right now is there are a ton of flex opportunities out there. So when I say flex, I'm talking about um, like jobs that you can take on as kind of a one-off or even like part-time on your own time. If you have even like an ounce of writing ability or you can edit, you can actually go onto a flex job website and just say, Hey, I have this talent and you apply and they're like, maybe they're just looking for someone to write a thousand words a week on uh, a tourist destination or about a certain product. So companies will actually hire people to write product reviews. And these opportunities are out there. And also something else that people aren't necessarily thinking about is there are still delivery, delivery services going on. And I know that there's a lot of hesitation about going outside, venturing outside of your home. But if you are really looking for money, you know, something like Deliveroo or Uber Eats, if it's available in your area, that's an easy way to make, you know, some quick bucks off of uh, maybe a few hours a night just delivering food to people who aren't able to go out because people still need food. So I, I think there are a lot of opportunities that are still available to people, but it's just a matter of figuring out what works for you. And also keep it in mind that this is a temporary problem and, you know, going out there and making waves and making very destructive decisions like taking out excess amounts of money um, from your bank or something like that when you know that you may not have the ability to pay it off. You know, if you have big purchases that you're looking to do right now, and you're out of work, now is not the time to make those decisions. And I say that because there will be a time when you are able to make a purchase like for a new car, or maybe you need a new TV or a computer. But if you know that times are kind of tough right now, you know, holding off on that and making sure that you are covering the essentials right now, um, that's super important. And if you know that you can pay off at least your rent, utilities, and provide food for yourself, your, uh, your anxiety is going to go down, I'll say that, because you, know, you don't have to worry about the necessities. And you know what? 
eventually the world will get back to normal and you'll be able to say, man, that was a rough time, but I learned a lot about myself. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so one of the other things that I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of right now because most people are working from home, um, and this can really be like anybody can can pick this up and do this. Um, but uh, have you heard of ClickBank? No, I haven't. Okay, so ClickBank. If I can get it pulled up, I can share screens with you real quick, uh, just to show you what it looks like. Uh, but it's basically an affiliate marketing hub. Let me go to the marketplace. There we go. So this is really cool that you can do from home right now, today, uh, to just start making a little extra cash. Uh, so this is ClickBank. There we go. So uh, ClickBank, you can go on here and like, let's say, uh, and you don't have to pick something that you're not familiar with. So you could pick a product that you use today uh, that you really like and enjoy. Um, but let's just go cooking food and wine. Uh, let's click on this one. Okay, so this one, keto sweets, keto slow cooker, paleo sweets, high commissions. Okay, so this, you can go on here. Uh, once you create a ClickBank bank account, you can hit promote. It'll create you your own link. And then... Uh, it'll also give you access to all of their marketing materials. So then you can go on Facebook and you can start building Facebook ads that go to your link uh, using their marketing ads. So you don't really do any work other than write the sales uh, or the copy for your, your ad. Uh, and most of the time you can copy and paste from their sales copy uh, and then run, start running targeted ads to your affiliate link. And anybody who purchases this product through that affiliate link, uh, then you get uh, commissions based off of that sale. So it'll tell you on ClickBank what the average sale is, uh, their initial sale, and then you can even find some that are uh, like reoccurring rebuild. So these are like reoccurring memberships. So if somebody clicks up and uh, clicks on it and signs up for a membership, then those are commissions that you get every single month, um, and you do not a whole lot to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, all you do is you find a product that you're passionate about, that you use or you, uh, you enjoy, and then that way you can actually post about it, talk about uh, how you use it and how it benefits you, uh, and then you can start running ads to it so anybody that clicks on those ads, uh, will get, uh, uh, you'll get commissions based off of it. Uh, but that's stuff like you can do from home. Um, so I'm a huge advocate of like take the money, like right now, take the money that uh, the extra money that you have and instead of spending it, uh, spend it on something that's going to make you more money. Uh, and that's one of the ways you can do that is by, uh, you know, you can pay for some ads for some affiliate links that, you, that you're promoting. Uh, yes, you're paying for the ads, but if you're paying a dollar for the ad and the average cart value is $12, then that just paid for itself. So. Very cool. Of <laughs> so, so uh, before we wrap this up, what resources does anxiety hackers have for people and does it cost money or you know what are we looking at here for everyone who's interested in solving their anxiety um because now is the time to focus on yourself especially if you're going through something in life and all of us right now are going through something by having to be stuck at home sometimes by ourselves and you know that's not an easy thing to do Yep. So this, this is our planner uh, and we're actually giving it away for free. Uh, you only pay shipping. We've already paid for the books. We've got the books. Uh, you pay for shipping and we'll send it right to you. But uh, the planner is uh, kind of like a workbook. Um, so it has stuff for you to fill in. Uh, but then it also has like letters and notes in there that you can read through. Uh, but it, it basically helps you uh, take what's causing you uh, to feel anxious, uh, putting all your goals uh, on, on paper and then helping you work through your, your daily schedule and your, your behaviors and habits um, so that you can uh, help overcome your anxiety. And so that planner, this is our 28 day challenge uh, planner. So you can get that and you can do that as many times as you want. Uh, but then uh, after that, then we have uh, uh, anxiety hacker oils, uh, which I'm a huge fan of these. 
So we have uh, we have these uh, essential oil roll-ons, um, and they're all therapeutic grade lavender oils. Um, so you can rub it on your wrist, or if you're like me and you have a huge beard, you can put it in the palm of your hand, rub it in your beard, and then you're smelling it all day. Uh, but uh, helps you, uh, at least it helps me ground yourself in the moment. Uh, and it's just one of those soothing smells that helps calm you down a little bit um, and then brings you back to the present. Um, and then we've got stuff like our, uh, our t-shirts and our wristbands. And then we have our flagship, which I'm super excited about. And that's our uh, anxiety hacker black box. And so that comes with the workbook comes with our truth about anxiety book. Uh, and then uh, I actually just recorded the audio book for that too. So the audio book will be available. Uh, and then it has our, um, uh, it has a dry erase 50 achievements checklist, which are all things that, uh, uh, Colton and I have gone through um, and and identified as like items or activities that will help you bust your anxiety. Um, and so as you go through them, you can check them off, but it's dry erase, so you can do it over and over and over again. Um, and then it's got our mantra, which uh, is just a thing that you can say every single day to help keep you in the, in the present and remind you that you're in control. Um, and then we also have uh, uh, this um, online course that is offered to you. Uh, it comes in a little flash drive in the box. And then uh, once you uh, plug in that flash drive, um, it has an entire course that correlates to the workbook and the book, um, which it has videos of uh, Colton and I talking about uh, anxiety and, and different methods and techniques we've used to, to overcome it. Uh, but once you get that course, you have lifetime access to it. So you can go back and you can go through as many lessons as you want, rewatch things until you've memorized it. Um, and then at the top of the, uh, the course, we actually have a timer uh, so you can see when the next live update will be. Uh, so we're constantly developing and, and uh, adding to the course and making it better. Uh, so that way, everybody who purchases the course, uh, once they go through the course, they can still look for new content. And it's not one of those things that they can go through once, put it on the shelf, say they did it, and then regress. It's something that they can always be a part of. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so for, uh, before we get off of here, what's the website that people can go to and is there any other social media that people can navigate to, to learn more? Yes. So, uh, if you, if you want to get the planner, um, that's the first step, uh, you can go to free anxiety Um, and then from there, it'll offer you the planner for free. You just pay for shipping. And then if you want any of the other stuff, like the lavender oils, the wristband, the t-shirt, or even the box, um, then you can order those through that same website as order bumps. Um, so you can upgrade your order to purchase the additional content. You don't have to, um, but we offer it to you just in case you want to um, upgrade your order. But um, that's where I would start. As a, go to freeanxietyplanner.com, check out the planner. And then after you've done that, you, if you want to order the other stuff, then you can order those, uh, those order bumps. Very cool. Social. Kyle, thank you so much for joining me on this channel. It's been really a pleasure talking to you and seeing you again, even though you've definitely left the military image behind. Um, I really appreciate you coming on here and talking about anxiety and how to overcome that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a, it's been a great, uh, great time being able to chat with you again. Absolutely. Thanks, Kyle. All right, so oh, hold on a second. Oh, technical difficulties. Hold on. So Kyle Giese is incredibly awesome. He is uh, one of the most positive people I've seen, I've met. And um, when he was working for me, he was always coming to me looking for, um, you know, the next big thing to cover um, when he was a photographer and – um, he was always had a big smile on his face. So it's awesome to see him pursuing something that not only he believes in, but he's very passionate about it. And he is a success story in itself. He's used the products. He's um, gone through the uh, the book that they are giving away for free. So um, it's definitely something that is very, very uh, motivational to know that it does work and to see the proof and to have someone working in that company to say, Hey, I've been there. I've done that. I've used the products and you know, I can 
be a real testament to it. So we're going to, um, something that Kyle mentioned as well was having multiple streams for your income and little things like that. We've talked about flexjobs.com. We've talked about Amazon jobs where you can go in there and basically apply to write script or to uh, do product reviews, things like that. There are a ton of ways to make a little extra money right now. And uh, I do have a video in my channel where we talked about the top side hustles out there. So go ahead and check that out. And another thing you can do right now, <clears throat> and I want to bring this up because this rolls right into our next topic, which is financial freedom. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've uh, been notified by your car insurer or not. But in addition to the economic stimulus that most Americans will be getting, you are probably getting some money back from your auto insurance because, you know, we're not driving right now. Most Americans are sitting at home and only using their vehicles for essential things like going to the store or to the hospital. And so um, car insurances are given something like $527 million back to insured auto drivers because of <clears throat> the situation right now. And so I encourage you to take it a step further. And since you have time right now, or most of us have time, look at what bills you're paying providers, look at your insurers, and now is the time to renegotiate. Shop around, look at if your current auto insurer is the best uh, right for you right now. So honestly, there is nothing stopping you from getting a better rate. And because there are a lot of options, it doesn't hurt to shop around. So that can be your gas and utilities. That can be your electri uh, electricity, your cell phone provider, your car insurance, things like that, where you are paying every single month and there may be a cheaper rate out there for you. And, you know, it may only be like a few bucks a month, but that few bucks could be going towards something else like investing in your retirement. So another thing you can do is looking at re mortgage or refinancing your mortgage. If you are eligible for that, or if you own a house, that is another way to get those rates down and put more money in your pocket so you can invest or you can cover other bills as you need. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, there are always ways to save money. Also, another thing you could do is we all still have to go shopping for groceries, right? Well, you can go online and clip coupons online. Also, stores like Safeway, Kroger, they have apps and within those apps, you can actually download manufacturer rebates. And so instead of bringing physical coupons into the store, you just clip them on your app, on your phone, and then those are loaded onto your account. So when you go to check out and you scan your shopping card, you will receive those rebates as you go. So, you know, little things that may help you along the way. So honestly, take advantage of it. And finally, we are going to talk about my weekly wish list, which is the top three stocks that I am interested in right now. And we're going to get into it. So my very first one is not AT&T. Very first one I want to look at. There we go is PBJ. Now PBJ is an excellent afternoon snack, you know, peanut butter and jelly. But in this case, it is an exchanged traded fund and it really does kind of cover what you would think of with PB and J. So you have Hershey, you have PepsiCo, you also have things like General Mills. These are all food and beverages that you can buy at the store and because they are still consumer staples and they are necessary for a lot of people, they are a great investment. So what an ETF is, is essentially you buy an ETF 
on the stock exchange and those ETFs are managed by somebody. And within that, you have a bunch of stocks, a bunch of shares, a bunch of holdings that someone who's managing that is diversifying your money for you. So because you are putting your money in the single fund, you are essentially investing in companies of all sorts of shape and size. And in this one in particular, they are focusing on food and beverages. So because people still need to eat, they still need to drink, and they still love their Pepsi Cola, um, they, in my mind, are a very stable and consistent ETF to invest your money in right now. So right now, they are at about $29.77 for a share. And if you look at the three-month graph right there, I know it's small, but essentially they are looking pretty decent compared to the rest of the market. My next one is Gilead Sciences. You can find them as G-I-L-D on the stock exchange. And I bring them up because they are actually in a research and development phase for a COVID-19 vaccine. And they are actually in phase three, which is the final phase, which means they are about to roll out on some very large scale testing or not testing, but you know, trials to get a vaccine or treatment out on the market. Also, something else that is very interesting about Gilead is they have a very strong focus on HIV and they are in phase three uh, trials, and they also have uh, medications on the market to uh, to treat HIV. So very important, very important. Um, their research cannot be understated, and because of the situation we find ourselves in right now, I think investing in a biotech company, especially a research one, is good for your portfolio, and I am looking at Gilead as a potential opportunity. Now, my final one is AT&T. You can find them as T on the stock exchange, and I bring them up because they are an excellent dividend payer. Uh, they pay about $2.08 per share, and they are currently uh, trading at a discount honestly. So they're at $30.22 as of today. And because of the status of the stock market right now, AT&T is trading at a discount, about a 20% discount, I think. So because they are where they are and their strong fiscal and economic um, financials, I would look into getting into them sooner than later, especially because they are trading much lower than they normally do. Everyone loves their cell phones and AT&T has proven to be quite a solid competitor on the stock market. So um, any questions or concerns on those? If you agree with my assessment, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on those three. I am currently holding PB and J and AT and T, and I plan on buying more AT and T as well because of their current status. So, anyway, so that's all I have for my topics. I hope you guys enjoyed that. There are a lot of opportunities right now, especially with the stock market beginning to take its rebound. I know that. Um, this bear market may have gone a little shorter than a lot of people anticipated. And there's a lot of irrational trading right now. I'm just going to be honest. Um, largest unemployment in uh, history, maybe in a very long time, at least uh, every single week, week after week, those job reports come out and the number of unemployed just keeps on growing. Stock market goes up. Bernie Sanders drops out of the market or drops out of the uh, running for the Democratic nominee stock market rallies like crazy. Of course, that one isn't as much of a surprise because of Bernie Sanders uh, 
you know, financial and economic plan for if he became president. But honestly, there is no rhyme or reason to the stock market right now. There is a lot of um, positivity towards it, even though there's not a lot of uh, positivity to be had. So anyways, with that being said, now's the time to get in the market. I've been preaching that over and over. Still believe it. I still believe it. And, uh, you know, there's no reason not to invest in the stock market. Uh, and if you have fears of it not rebounding, I can just tell you right now, that is not the case. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Let me know how I can improve it in the future. I thank you all for tuning in and for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. And with that being said, I hope you have a great afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. This has been Nathaniel. This is The Short Show, and uh, I will see you next week. Thanks for tuning into The Short Show. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next week.